Hello, I will be discussing uh, assembly, disassembly, and how to handle properly handle the saxophone. So, first thing you want to do is uh, set your case on the ground, make sure it's right side up, make sure it's on the ground, preferably somewhere carpeted, so in case you drop something, you're not dropping on like a hardwood or concrete floor, it's not going to break. Very important, you don't want to break this instrument, because that'd be very bad. Don't do that. So, first thing you want to do is grab your neck strap. And just go and throw that around your neck. And then uh, you might have to adjust it just a little bit. Like I know for me, I have to, you know, tight. I have to make it a little bit shorter. You know, just so it won't, it'll be comfortable. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a little bit. So you want to do that. Then next, make sure you get the mouthpiece. You know. Get the mouthpiece cap off. Make sure you got the got the ligature, got the mouthpiece. You want to set that down for just a second, and then uh, actually, you know what? We're actually gonna grab that, and then we're gonna grab our reed. And normally, while while we're uh, while I would be doing this, I would have the reed in my mouth, to make sure to get it wet before I put it on. Uh, I'm trying to talk to you, so I'm trying not to do that as much, but I'm gonna go and do that now. Okay, that should about cover it for right now. And so what we want to do is, what I like to do is I like to put the reed on the mouthpiece and we want to make sure the ligature is loose and we just kind of slide it in and make sure the reed is perfectly lined up with the mouthpiece. You don't want it sticking out to the sides or up too far up, too far down. Make sure it's nice and lined up with the mouthpiece because that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. And then once it's lined up to your liking, go ahead and uh, tighten up the ligature so the reed will be fastened to the mouthpiece. Then uh, next we want to do is uh, grab our neck and uh, the neck of the, of the saxophone. And we can go ahead and just gently slide our mouthpiece right on the neck. And so now, now that we've done this, let's go ahead and set this down for, a little, for just a second. And we're gonna grab uh, the body of the saxophone. And so you're gonna wanna grab it by the bell. This is the, gonna be the safest place to grab it, is right by the bell. And right here, there's a little, little you know, key ring right here. Well, not a key ring, but a little ring right here that you can attach uh, your neck strap to. And even though I have the neck strap uh, connected, I'm not going to let go of the saxophone because, you know, you don't want to trust the neck strap. You don't want to accidentally, you know, drop it, break anything. Next, uh, take this cap off. Don't lose it. It's very important. So put this in your, in your case. It's probably somewhere safe. And uh, make sure these screws are loose before you try to do anything. And normally, uh, you want to use cork grease on these uh, joints, anything that's trying to slide in. I've already done this, but just make sure you've already done that. You do that regularly, so everything will be nice and smooth. You don't want to try to force anything in, because that's how things bend. It's how they break. Never good. So that should just slide right on. Perfect. And then go ahead and tighten this. Tighten that up. And it's fastened. And then as far as disassembly goes, uh, do you take the neck off, put the cap back on here, the body on it. Basically do what I did, but just in reverse. It's it's just that simple. Then yeah, like I said, handling, make sure you've always got a firm grasp on the saxophone. Don't fully trust, don't fully trust the neck strap because that's not gonna end well for you might drop things, you might break things, that's never good. You don't want to do that. And when you're handling things, your uh, your left thumb should be on this back area right here, which is right by the octave key. It's very, very simple, remember? And you know, finish the lay right here, and there's a little joint thing right here for you to put your, uh, your right thumb, excuse me, right here, it should be able to rest right there perfectly and uh, 
that should about do it right now. That should cover it for this portion. And uh, next portion. So one thing I did want to mention that I didn't mention in the previous segment was that, uh, you know, proper posture. So you want to make sure you sit on the edge of your seat, sit up straight. Uh, you want to make sure uh, the neck strap is adjusted so that the, sacks, the mouthpiece comes directly to your face. You don't want to try to lean forward to try to meet it. You don't want it like to try to like reach for it. It should come just naturally to your face. Like so. Sit up straight, uh, you know, good posture, kind of, what I like to think about with good posture is, I think of like a little string right here, I pull it up and it just naturally kind of just extends my posture just a little bit, makes it just a little bit better. Make sure, uh, you know, chin is relaxed, you don't want it to like, like tense up. Those are the main things with posture. Uh, and as far as basic camp position goes, I feel like I already covered a good portion of that. Uh, as far as the keys go, I mentioned the thumb rests, and uh, with the left thumb, you want to make sure you can be able to reach the octave key simultaneously as as well as your left while your left thumb is rested there. Right thumb should you know rest where I told you earlier. And as far as finger position, I don't know if you can see super well, but they should just come right. The, your fingers should just rest right on these pads. And you don't want to cover, it should be more kind of, like, kind of like the fingertips, like kind of like the pads of your fingers. You don't want to try to reach around, try to grab like a bunch of keys at once. That's not advised. Uh, the saxophone, it's a very dexterous instrument. It requires a lot of finger dexterity. So you want to be in a good position where your fingers will be able to reach different places of the saxophone pretty easily. Let's see if I forgot anything else. And again, make sure you're always holding the saxophone with your hands. Don't trust the neck strap. Can't stress that enough. Don't trust the neck strap. Cool. Next, I want to discuss uh, modeling level appropriate saxophone tone for beginners. And so I just want to talk about first, like what exactly is level appropriate tone? So uh, things you want to consider is the volume should be a medium range. You don't want to be overly loud or overly soft. You want to be somewhere that's pretty easily reachable for these beginners. And you don't want to cause them to like play. You don't want to start any bad habits with them always trying to play super loud or trying to play super soft. Generally not advised. You don't necessarily want to do that. And then uh, you don't want to include vibrato. Again, uh, it'll, it's just overly complicated. You don't want to confuse them too much. There's already enough going on. Just a straight tone is fine. Uh, generally, you want to model tones in the middle of the range. So like anywhere from like a, a, like a middle B to a low G on the staff, that should be fine. That should be pretty comfortable. That's not going to be super, uh, there's not going to be a lot of resistance. You don't necessarily need to use the right hand should be pretty easy. Uh, and then again, depending on the situation, uh, instead of, you know, using tongue, you might want to use like an ah or an O oh sound just to reinforce the idea that this is a wind instrument. You're not trying to get sound by, uh, tonguing the reed into vibration. You're trying to blow the reed, like blow into the reed, which you, the, you, you which the force of your air should be able to, should be what's causing the reed to vibrate, which is going to produce that sound. And uh, generally, I mean, obviously, you know, situation is different now, but generally you want to have as much live modeling as possible for them to be able to model, model their tone after. I think that's generally going to be the best thing for them. Yeah. Uh, being able, and I think just being able to, for them to hear the tone before they play it is super beneficial because with wind players, when they're playing wind instruments, it's super beneficial. And especially with singers too, like hearing the pitch before they attempt to play it is going to make things so much easier for them if they learn how to do that early on. So yeah, that about covers everything for this portion.
Next, I want to discuss embouchure. And so I'm just going to go over a couple guidelines that you can, it's a little checklist that can be followed to ensure that you have a proper embouchure for saxophone. So first you want to make sure your lower lip is slightly formed over the lower teeth, kind of curled. I don't necessarily like that word, but you know, kind of over the lower, the lower teeth just a little bit and just drawn towards the center of the mouth rather than stretched tightly. Again, big thing when we reinforce this isn't necessarily supposed to be tight or tense. You still want to be relaxed. You still want to be kind of relatively loose. You don't want to be super tight. That's going to make things harder for you. And uh, the top teeth should be directly placed on top of the mouthpiece. So if I curl my lower lip over the bottom of my teeth, rest my teeth on the mouthpiece, it should kind of be something like this. I can feel the mouthpiece with my teeth. Not necessarily biting down on it, but you know, it's up against there. And then uh, the reed should be touching my lower lip, which is curled over my bottom teeth. You don't want to have your teeth touching directly against the reed. That's not necessarily great. And obviously there's like side variations based on your facial structure. Everyone's going to be just a little bit differently. So you kind of have to play around with like the different amount of like bottom lip and teeth that you want to use, or even how far you go down the reed. That's going to, that's going to affect things. I mean, everyone is just slightly differently. We're all different people. That's what makes us human. And then, uh, like, uh, I showed before, you should be relatively aligned with your top and bottom teeth. You don't want to go for like an overbite or underbite thing. You should be relatively like, aligned with each other. That should help. And then, yeah, obviously some people have naturally have underbites or overbites. You just gotta work with that. And again, what's most important is the lower lips contact with the reed. Because the reed is, is the key, is the key of the puzzle here. That's, that's what's really important. And then again, uh, you want to insert enough mouthpiece where you can get a free vibrating reed. You go here, not necessarily going to, you're kind of cutting off the reed. And then down here, you know, you don't go too far because then you're kind of pressing up against the ligature and there's a whole other set of problems with that. So you just kind of have to find what, what spot works for you. I tend to go a little bit farther down the reed, but some people might feel more comfortable a little bit higher up than I do. But that's fine. Whatever works for you is what's important. And then uh, your chin should remain relatively relaxed. Not necessarily flat. You don't want to point it or try to stretch it because that's going to affect your lower lip, which is going to affect the effectiveness of the embouchure. You don't want to do that. Uh, it should just remain as natural as possible. And then uh, the corners of the mouth, you'll kind of pull those towards the center. You don't want to like kind of stretch them out tight like you would if maybe you say for like trumpet, you want to kind of keep it tight, but this just kind of naturally pull it towards the center. You know, it's super awkward. And again, again, it should be flexible, should be tense. You don't want to be tight. That's going to, that's going to mess things up for you. Don't do that. Please don't do that. And a lot of times what you can do is you can, uh, to test your embouchure, you can just blow into the mouthpiece alone. That can be super helpful. I think that would be great to try. I, uh, with the proper embouchure, thing to consider is I was uh, I was relaxed with the corners of my mouth drawn in I had a, an appropriate level of mouthpiece in my mouth which worked for me and uh, you know lip curled over teeth on top I didn't try to do that I was trying to play super tense see there's not really anything coming out that's super tense it's uncomfortable I'm trying to like point my chin a little bit and just cutting off the reed that's not gonna work be relaxed.
Next, let's discuss uh, breathing and some easy first tones for beginners. So breathing, incredibly important. Uh, not being able to draw a, a proper breath is frankly unacceptable. It's just like a violinist that can't properly bow. It's without that fundamentally it just can't work. And so big thing to make to, uh, to keep in mind is uh, you don't want to take your mouth off the mouthpiece when you breathe. You should try to breathe from like the corners of your mouth. So I'm breathing. Hear that? There's there's that airflow, and if you notice, my mouth doesn't come off the mouthpiece at all. It's just I'm taking in uh, air from the corners of my mouth, keep my embouchure set. If I was to try to do it with that, like take my mouth completely off, that's just that's not gonna work. That's just uh, completely ineffective. So, uh, inhalation should be relatively quickly. Uh, make sure your co contact upper and lower, upper, lower jaw is maintained. Again, don't take that off at, ever. And a uh, big thing about air pressure is the amount of air pressure is directly related to the, the quality of the sound. And so, generally, uh, saxophone uses a smaller amount of air pressure than say like clarinet or oboe but it requires a large amount of air so that's that's a big thing to keep in mind so there's less resistance but you need a lot more air to get good sound uh, make sure your shoulders are in a relaxed position when you're breathing if you're kind of forward you're kind of cutting off the airflow like the diaphragm is a little bit cut off. You want to make sure you're have good. And again, posture is super important. Good posture. You want to breathe. It'll, it's going to not restrict airflow. It's going to make that easy. You, again, all of it, all of this is just making, making this as easy as a process as possible for you. The last thing you want to be is uncomfortable during this. And while I, while I say it needs, when I mention that this needs a lot of air, I don't mean to take in like huge breaths because this can be kind of, it can be counterproductive to hold on to a ton of air. You might tie yourself out a little bit faster. Just take what, take the air that you need. Don't try to take more than you need. And, uh, you know, I'm using an outside right now, but instruments like the tenor and the baritone saxophones require a lot of, Less pressure, but just a lot more air because they're just bigger instruments and there's more tubing and stuff to go through. And uh, a couple good first tones. Uh, generally, C sharp, stay away from C sharp. It's not necessarily a great first tone. A really good one is B, which is just your first finger down on your left hand, right in the middle of the staff. That's super good. middle range pretty easy to attain uh, a is also a good one which is just adding your middle finger on your left hand and the last one was G which is third finger those are some great early tones just to get you know for beginners get used to that so keep that in mind So lastly, I want to discuss some other factors, including air usage, you know, breathing. So again, breathing is just inhalation and exhalation. And uh, just as air pressure increases while air quantity decreases, you know, you know, from larger to smaller saxophones, air usage varies similarly. So like I mentioned before, you know, bigger, you know, instruments like the baritone saxophone, uh, they require a lot more air, but you know, the resistance of like the, the amount of pressure needed is a lot smaller. And then, uh, the, the big idea 
is you need to adjust the amount of inhaled air to the need to the musical passage. Like, you know, for a small pianissimo passage, you're not going to be inhaling a ton of air. You don't need that much air. You just need a small amount of air. You just need a small amount of sound for that. Um, what next? And, uh, you know, as, as with anything, you know, practicing the ear scales, I mean, practice breathing. Get used to that. Practice uh, taking in different amounts of air. Try playing a passage and see how, how you know, see how, you know, take in varying the less qual like quantities of air and try to see how, how much, what's like the smallest amount of air you can take in and still play the passage correctly and beautifully. It's just practice. You just got to practice that. And then, uh, Another thing you can do is uh, if you have excess air, you know, purposely exhale old hair prior to take prior to taking a new breath. So don't hold on to that. If you take it too much air, don't hold on to that air when you take your new breath. Just get get rid of that exhale and uh, take in the next breath. That's you know, taking a good breath is all is incredibly important. It's the biggest building block to get a great sound on the on the saxophone.